So the first data structure that we'll take a look at is called a stack. Now, the way that I typically think of a stack is sort of like an actual like stack of objects in real life, you know, maybe like a stack of plates or something like that. When you go to put a plate onto a stack, you put it on the top of the stack, and then when you want to remove a plate, you take it off the top of the stack as well. That's the same idea as this data structure. We're gonna have a whole bunch of data and we can add things to the top of the stack of data, or we can remove things from the top of the stack of data. And those are sort of the key operations that we're going to be doing with it. So to give you a bit of a visualization, um, suppose that we have the following numbers. Say we have five and four and three, for instance. And I wanna insert these values onto the stack one by one. So on the first insert, which we'll say will be five. So say we wanna insert five first. What will happen is we'll add a value onto the stack and it will be five. And that's currently the only value on the stack. Now, when we go to add the value four, it will get added on top of five. So essentially we'll have a top that sort of like points this top value, right? So um, four would be the new top of the stack. What that means is that if you wanna remove a value from the stack, it would remove four since that's the top value. Similarly, if you add the three onto the stack, you would have three here. Um, three would become the new top of the stack. Meaning again, if you wanna remove a value, you would remove three since it's on top. So these different operations have different names. Um, when we add a value onto the stack, it's referred to as pushing a value onto the stack. When we remove a value from the stack, it's referred to as popping a value from the stack. So again, we add to the top of the stack and remove from the top of the stack. And we typically refer to this as a very specific structure of op our, our data structure. And that data structure is referred to as a last in first out data structure. So um, it's typically like short formed to LIFO, last in first out. What that means is that the last value that is added to the data structure is the first value that is removed from the data structure. So when we added three onto the stack, for instance, three was the last value to be added onto the data structure, which means if we then pop a value off the stack, it would remove the three since that was the last value on the stack. So it's the first one that is removed off of the stack. So that's the way to sort of think about stacks. And stacks show up in a lot of different applications. The main one is actually in computer memory. Computer memory is typically configured as a stack and we can push things onto computer memory or pop things off of the memory as we go. And that's sort of like one of the main applications of stacks is in memory management. So that's one example of how we can utilize stacks. Now the implementation of a stack is gonna utilize the node object. Each of these entries in the stack here are nodes. And essentially we keep track of which one is on top of the stack and that one will point to the next value in the stack. So its next value will be the thing underneath it. So three would point to four and then four would point to five and then five points to nothing, right? And essentially we can follow through that structure and when we pop something off the stack, we just um, you know move to the next value and make that the new top. So you'll see how this works once we start implementing it in Python. But for now, this is a good sort of general idea of what a stack will look like um, when you're actually implementing it. So with that being said, let's go ahead and try implementing it in Python and see how that works. So inside of here, I have um, a setup that has a main and I have my node object that we discussed in, the, um, in one of the other videos that I have, right? So we have this node object and we're gonna use this node object to create a stack. So the very first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new class to store our stack inside of. And I'll just call it stack. And what we're gonna do is we're going to import the node object because we need the node in order to implement the stack. So the node is always gonna be imported as our first sort of thing here. So then we're gonna have our class and it's gonna be called stack. And we're gonna have, of course, an initialization, right? Just like any other object that you would implement. And the only thing that we're gonna initialize is what the top currently is. So I'm gonna say self.top equals none, as in there's nothing on top of the stack right now. So this is essentially initializing a blank stack. And when we push values onto the stack, we're gonna update that top value to say what the new top of the stack is. And when we pop values off the stack, then we're going to you know, remove them from the top and then update the top to be the next value inside of the stack. So let's start off with the actual push. So with the push operation, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take in a value and that value can be anything that the person wants to specify. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a node with that value and we're going to set it to be the top of the stack. 
So what we do is we say, um, I'm going to say inval equals node. And this node is going to have the value that's provided by the user. And this node is going to point to the current top. So what's happening here is essentially we're creating a new node. That node has the value that was provided by the user and it's going to point to the top, right? And then we're going to set the top to be equal to the value that we just provided. So if you want to get a bit of an idea of what this is looking like when we're pushing the values onto the stack, we can go back and um, take a look at our little diagram that we had before, right? So inside of this diagram, suppose that we have another number that we want to insert, say two, for instance. If I want to insert two, what happens is we create a new node and that new node has a value of two. In this stack, the current top is three. So what we do is we point this node to that value. So we point that node to three. So as you can see, now that value has like a link into the stack. And we already know that three already points to four and four already points to five and five points to nothing. So we're just adding this new link to sort of like, you know, pull everything together. And then what we do is we update the top. So we say the top is no longer three. The top is now two. So that's the general process of what we're doing when we're pushing a value onto the stack. We create a node, we give it a value, we make it point to the previous top, and then we update the top to be that new, um, that new value that's been inserted. So this is the idea of pushing a value onto the stack. When we want to remove a value from the stack, we're going to do a pop. And a pop doesn't take in any arguments, it just removes the first value off the stack. So what I'm going to do is I'm first going to check to see if there is anything on the stack. So I'm going to say if self.top is none, right, then we're just going to return. You know, if there's nothing that's on the stack, we don't want to try to pop anything off because it's not going to work. So we're just going to return if there is nothing on the stack. So we'll just stop there. Otherwise, if there is something on the stack, what we're going to do is we're going to first get the value of what's on top of the stack. So I'll call it value ret or value return. And that'll be equal to self.top.getValue. So this will get the value of whatever is currently on top of the stack. So that's step one. Step one is to get the value that's currently on top of the stack. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to update the top of the stack to point to what comes next. So um, whatever comes next in the chain is what we want to update it as, right? So typically what I like to do is I like to say like next val equals self.top.getNext. So I'm going to store the next value inside of a variable. And then I'm going to say self.top equals next val. Now you could have done this all in one line. You could have done self.top equals self.top.getNext. Um, it's a little bit more wordy. I like to typically separate it into two pieces, but um, it's really up to preference on what you do with that. So once you've done that, then you can simply just return value ret. So I will return the value that was on top of the stack. So again, let, let's go back to our diagram. Let's just revisit what exactly we're doing. So on this stack here, suppose that we want to now pop right? So two is currently the top of the stack. What we're doing is we're taking this two and we're storing it in our variable, which is um, the value ret variable, right? So we store the value of two in that variable. And then what we do is we get what comes next. So the value that comes next in this case is three. And then what we do is we take this top pointer and we point it over to three. So it no longer points to two. So at this point, the top of the stack is now set back to three. We've returned the value two to the user, and this node effectively ceases to exist, right? Since nothing points to it anymore, it's been essentially removed from the stack. And that's the idea of how we can pop values off the stack. Now, there are two other operations that are commonly used in Python with stacks, or really just in general with stacks. And those would be the peak operation, as well as the is empty operation. The peak operation just lets you see what the value is on top of the stack. It doesn't change the value. It doesn't add anything. It doesn't remove anything. It just tells you what's on top of the stack. So with this, you can just simply do something like return um, self.top.getValue, and that will tell you what's on top of the stack, right? So peaking is like popping. However, it doesn't remove the value. It just tells you what's on top of the stack. And then we can also have one that is empty. And what this will do is it will just tell you if the stack is empty. 
To tell you if the stack is empty, we simply just need to check if the top is equal to none, right? So if the top is none, then the stack is empty. Otherwise, it's not empty. So to do that, you can just say return self.top is none, right? So if it is none, then it will return true. If it's not none, then it will return false. And this is all of the implementation that's typically required to make a stack. So it's a fairly straightforward data structure. Um, it's really just about understanding the different operations and what they do. That pushing puts something on top of the stack, popping removes it from the stack and returns that value to the user. Just to finally tie everything together, let's take a look at how we can implement this inside of um, some code. So I'm gonna go ahead and import my stack. So I'll say from stack import stack. And then what I'll do is I'll say um, like s equals stack. So I'll create a new stack and then I'm gonna push on some values. So I'll push on um, some values. Let's say um, we'll push on one, we'll push on two and we'll push on three, right? So now if you're thinking of how this stack current looks, right? The first thing we put on was one. So one is the top and then we put on two. So two becomes the top. And then we put on three. So then three becomes the top, right? So now we have a stack where three is on top and then two follows it and then one follows it afterwards. And then from here, we can just try popping the value. So we can say print s.pop and we can do that three times. And you can just sort of see how the structure is going to look when we print this, right? So remember, pop is going to remove what's on top. So I'm expecting this to remove three and then remove two and then remove one, right? So that's what it should print out to us when we run this. And as you can see, that's exactly what we get. We get three and then two and then one because the values got pushed onto the stack in that order. And now we just go and pop them all off. So this gives you an idea of how to implement this stack inside of Python and how it can be used inside of your Python programs. Again, stacks are very common for memory management, but there's a lot of different applications for stacks that you'll see in things like algorithms and sort of related topics. But this gives you a good general idea of how you can implement stacks inside of Python and um, the general idea of what a stack actually is as a data structure.